Asian phenotype in diabetes differs from the Western phenotype in the form that the onset of type 2 diabetes is nearly two decades earlier in Asia, specifically South Asia as compared to the Western world. And also when you talk of the phenotype, uh, these patients are much more leaner, they have a much a lesser body mass index, they have greater markers of insulin resistance like acanthosis nigricans, they have increased central obesity, increased occurrence of skin tags. Type 2 diabetes in itself is such a big spectrum disorder. We have patients of type 2 diabetes who are obese to morbidly obese or those who will have clear cut features of insulin resistance or like ladies with polycystic ovarian syndrome in them our primary focus would be to cause weight loss so in them the primarily medications would be metformin as the first line as the second line we would love to use sglt2 inhibitors which we know they cause weight loss we would love to use a glp1 analog which are again known to cause weight loss so we would be avoiding medications which cause weight gain like the glitter zones in this scenario on the other hand, if you have a lean type 2 diabetes uh, with lesser markers of insulin resistance, they are the patients who are more likely to develop beta cell dysfunction earlier. So in those patients, we should be very cautious and we should maybe start insulin use at an earlier age. And the assessment of C-peptide levels one hour after a meal is a great measure of beta cell function in these patients. Well, the no pre-diabetes is a transient state between normal glycemia at one end and diabetes on the other end. The very fact that Indians are more metabolically challenged, they have greater insulin resistance, they have a thrifty phenotype. So not only the onset of diabetes is earlier in them, even the progression from pre-diabetes to diabetes is nearly 14 to 18 percent per year in Indians as compared to only 2.5 percent in USA or only 6% in Finland. Vitamin D is something which has fascinated us. We now know that the vitamin D receptor is there in almost every human organ and tissue. Well, till now we have had equivocal data with some studies showing vitamin D has the beneficial effect in preventing the progression of pre-diabetes to diabetes. There are other studies showing it has no benefits on blood glucose control in diabetes. The D2D study, the results of which was discussed in ADA 2019, showed that in a vitamin D sufficient individual, if you give vitamin D, we are not going to give any additional benefits in terms of blood glucose levels. But in a vitamin D deficient individual who is pre diabetes, if we correct the vitamin D deficiency along with a good therapeutic diet and lifestyle change, we may actually prevent the progression from diabetes, pre diabetes to diabetes, or may even reverse it back to normal glycemia. So that's what I discussed in the last question. The D2D study is the largest study. It's, it's a randomized controlled trial, multicentric trial, 15 different centers where they give 4000 IU of vitamin D daily in the study group and the control group received placebo. And in this study, they showed that overall there was no benefit of correcting vitamin D deficiency. But in a small cohort, subgroup analysis, only 20% of the patients who were vitamin D deficient, they did notice a benefit in terms of improving glycemia and reduction in insulin resistance. Yes, we need larger studies having a purely a large cohort of vitamin D deficient pre-diabetes individuals to really validate it. And it should be not only multi-centric, it should be multi-country study.